back. Tom Harvin here with you. You will recall that, uh, you know, after George W. Bush decided that in response to 9-11, rather than hunting down the criminal bin Laden and the presumably a couple dozen, maybe a few hundred people who were involved with this crime with him, and possibly, if the reporting in today's New York Post is correct, uh, those within the Saudi government, Rather than hunting them down, George W. Bush decided instead to bomb the second poorest country in the world, Afghanistan, with an annual GDP of $2 billion. We have spent about a trillion dollars in Afghanistan, a $1,000 billion. Uh, he decided to, to bomb a country where the average annual family income was $700 a year. And he decided to bomb them, what, to get bin Laden? No. I, you know, he just took, took out the country. You know, got to have a war. Take down Grenada. Take down the Falklands. Take down Afghanistan. Got to have a little war. And during that war, Donald Rumsfeld, who was a libertarian's libertarian, and L. Paul Bremer, who was another libertarian, and Dick Cheney, uh, somewhere between libertarian and fool, decided that it would be a good thing to start privatizing military services. You know, private industry can do things better than government. So let's privatize the damn post office. So they privatized the post office in Afghanistan. Then the next year when they invaded Iraq, they did the same thing with the post office in Iraq. And so what happened when they privatized the post office in Iraq was that the company that got the private contract to deliver the mail from the airport in, Af in, in Iraq to the, to the military bases, it was they pick it up at the, at, the, uh, at the Baghdad airport, which is about 30, 40 miles out of town, and drive it into town and into the green zone and deliver it to the soldiers who were, who were barracked there. The private company that got the contract to do that just said, no, we're not going to do it. We'll take your money. We'll take your contract. But we are not going to have, we're not going to risk our drivers. They're not going to drive along that road. There are IEDs on that road. There are snipers on that road. And if American soldiers want their mail, they're going to have to come to the airport to get it. Cindy Sheehan's son, Casey, was missing a letter from his mom and from his friends. He wanted to read his mail. And the only way to read his mail was to drive to the airport to get it. Because George W. Bush and Don, Ch Don Rumsfeld and Paul Bremer had privatized the post office. And so Casey drove out to get his mail, hit an IED, and died. And Cindy Sheehan went on a one-woman campaign to get George W. Bush impeached or disgraced or whatever. I mean, literally, there's pictures around someplace of Cindy Sheehan and I standing outside George W. Bush's neighborhood down in Texas. It's a gated neighborhood, so we couldn't get to his house. We stood outside the gate to his gated neighborhood with a bullhorn saying, war criminal. But the other thing that Cindy Sheehan told us about was that George W. Bush had had a conversation in 1999, before he was officially running for president, his parents had, had organized a writer. Mickey Herskowitz was an old friend of the Bush family, an old friend of George and Barbara, George Sr. And he'd written for the Bush family before, and they knew him. They'd known him for decades. And so they hired him to write George Jr.'s autobiography, because George Jr. is a doofus. Couldn't, couldn't write a book if he had to. So they hired a professional writer. His name was Mickey Herskowitz. And Mickey recorded something like 100 hours of audio tape with, with George W. About, you know, why do you want to be president? What should we write about? Tell me about your childhood. You know, whatever. All the stuff you need to write a book. The book is called A Charge to Keep, by the way. It was published in early 2000. But Herskowitz, about halfway through this project, you know, he turned in the first draft of the book. And the Bush family read it and said, this is not suck up enough. This does not do a good enough job of portraying George W. Bush as a superhero. And so they fired him, and they hired another ghostwriter to finish the book, to make it a more suck-up book, right? 
But Mickey Herskowitz did the first draft. And here is Cindy Sheehan talking about what is in one of those tapes that Mickey Herskowitz has from his conversations with George W. Bush in 1999. As a matter of fact, in interviews in 1999 with respected journalists and longtime Bush family friend Mickey Herskowitz, then Governor George Bush stated, one of the keys to being seen as a great leader is to be seen as commander in chief. My father had all this political capital built up when he drove the Iraqis out of Kuwait and he wasted it. If I have a chance to invade, if I had that much capital, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to get everything passed that I want to get passed, and I'm going to have a successful presidency, end quote. There you go. There you go. George W. Bush, I'm going to privatize Social Security on the back of a successful war in Iraq. That was what he was saying. He ran for, for Congress in 1977 on the, on the platform of privatizing Social Security. Lost. 78. Excuse me, the election of 78. And... And, you know, he ran for president. He didn't talk a lot about privatizing Social Security, but it had always been at the top of his agenda. You know, the Bush family, they, I mean, his grandfather, Prescott Bush, was a banker. You know, Brown, Harriman, whatever it was, Bush. A banker who was supporting the Nazis. Franklin Roosevelt called him out on it. He almost lost his bank over it. So, you know, of course they want to privatize Social Security because... Banks should be making money off Social Security. Federal government shouldn't be handling it on a nonprofit basis. It should be the banks. So we had this war. 